Good afternoon, football fans. I'm Jack Brickhouse, along with Eric Cuffman and Frank Babcock, saying welcome to professional football with the Chicago Bears on the WGN Chicago Bears Football Network. Today we're broadcasting direct from Lambeau Field in Green Bay, where the Bears will meet the Green Bay Packers. We'll have the kickoff in just a few minutes. Her Batterly. And that's it to Williams back there. Travis Williams as usual. Well, here's the kick by first ball, and it's dropped in the end zone by Travis Williams, and he decides to down it there. So it'll be the Packers ball. First and ten to go on their own 20-yard line. Be ready now. Here we go. After a scoreless first quarter in which neither team could get on track, Green Bay gained its first first down of the game on a pitch run. We're back on the air here. The score in uh, the East is Baltimore 10, New York nothing in the second period. Here is Green Bay, it's nothing, nothing, the Chicago Bears. And that's about as even a first quarter, Jack, as I guess you could find anywhere. And nobody had any advantage. Nobody could penetrate that third down uh, for a continuing thrust. Here we go, Jack. Willie Wood and Brown of the deep end for the Packers as Kilgore gets his punt away from the Bear 28. It's a low punt, but it uh, carries fairly well. Taken at the 20-yard line by Wood. Backed up to the 17. Now he reverses and starts up field in the semicircle. He's knocked uh, down by Joe Taylor and finally out of bounds by Gurick. And by E.B. advancing the ball then to the 26-yard line. A 44-yard boot, 5-yard return, net 39 to the Bears from their line of scrimmage. And that puts the ball now in the Packer possession. First and ten to go for Green Bay on their own 25-yard line. Spotted out by Ruffley Haggerty. No score. All right. Last year up here, the Green Bay... Chicago Bear uh, game was a 13 to 10 final with Chandler kicking a field goal from way out there in the closing seconds of the game. Not too much unlike the one that Mac Percival came up with last week. Here's the snap, the handoff now to Anderson. He finds himself what appeared to be a hole on the slant off the right side. However, suddenly a big arm appeared and grabbed him around the waist. That arm owned by Butkus and by Lloyd Phillips. And he was slowed up and suddenly coming up also to help out with Evie. And over out of it, Dan. As a result, a short gain on the play when it started out looked like a hold uh, good enough to make a good game. Put the ball then at the 27-yard line. Second down, eight yards to go for the first down. Down going into the second quarter now. No score. Up on the forward wall for the Bears, the usual foursome of Phillips, John Johnson, Evie, Obradovich. The snap, the trap play, pullback trap, and it's giving a pitch. There's a lot of daylight here. He's across the 30 and up to the 35-yard line. Joe Taylor coming up to the secondary. Burnell suddenly reversing and chasing from behind on the angle. Managed to knock him down, but not before he got across the 35 to the 36-yard line. And the Bears defense was cool a little bit on that one. Nine yards on that play, and it looked like he was going to make a good deal more than nine before it was all over. It'll be a first down then for Green Bay. First and ten to go in their own 36-yard line. The Bears secondary still involved. Richie Pettibone, the free safety, uh, is uh, Rosie Taylor. Quarterback center Joe Taylor, Benny McRae, and they're up on the line of scrimmage right now. They'll be bumping a little bit with those uh, ends that are spread out. Here's Charles Taylor, and he's down. He has that football. He's down for a big loss. Kyle Bradovich and Lloyd Phillips is game converging from their end position. And uh, Bart Starr, the smart heady quarterback that he is, rather than throw desperately to somebody who was covered, ate the ball, took the big loss, putting the ball back on the 23-yard line, and that was a good loss, too. It was a 5, 10, 12, or 13-yard loss on the play. Minus 13, that makes it now. Second down, 23 yards to go for the first down for the Green Bay Packers, huddling now between the 10 and 15-yard line, and their uh, orange-yellow type pants. Same color helmet, dark green jerseys, white numerals. Well, the teams has come in for Green Bay. And it's flanked out to the right. Marv Fleming is the tight right end. He's there now, too. And here's a pass, and it's caught by Elijah Pitts, who is down and bumped out of bounds by Benny McRae from the secondary of the 27, 28-yard line. Elijah Pitts taking the pass. There was a flag down. And it looks like this one finally is going to be against Green Bay Cup because the Bears have the option. Yes. Judging from the way uh, the discussion is going, Dick Butt just talking it over with referee Haggerty. Several penalties were charged against the Bears in the first quarter. 
Now here in the second quarter, the first real penalty, it looks like, is against the Green Bay Packers. The Bears, the Bears may have rejected. are going to uh, turn down a holding penalty. It would have been a 15-yard penalty, but the Bears actually uh, caused the Packers to use up a doubt, and having... Uh, Got such a huge loss at Mark Starr's expense on the previous play. Since it's now third down and 16 yards to go for a first down, they're better off to leave it that way rather than uh, let the Packers get that down back even though they gained 15 yards. No score. 12 minutes, 38 seconds to go in the second quarter. Out of the huddle they come. Carroll Dale flanked to the right. James is way out there to the right. Picked up in a one-on-one -on -one by Major Hazelton who's in the ball game now. Richie Pettibone keeping a real weather eye on that slot man. The snap, back goes Starr, looks like he wants to pass, he waits, he throws, and he hits it, and he's down at the 45-yard line, knocked down by Dick Buckus, and again, Mr. Bar Starr, thread of the needle, they got their first down, 17 yards on that play, moving the ball up to the 45-yard line, they did not get their first down, correction, they are fourth and one, they almost got their first down, now with fourth down and one. The ball at the 45-yard line of the Packers. Anderson will probably punt. No score, 11.55 to go in the first half. Kick is away at the 35. It's a beauty. Oh, man, this is really fun. That may go into the end zone. It does go into the end zone, and Gail Sayers and Gary Lyle are delighted to let it go in there. 55-yard boot, of course, reduced by 20 yards because it'll be a touchback and be brought out to the 20-yard line. Timeout on the field. 11.43 to go in the first half. Timeout on the field. We'll return with more action in just one minute. There's ball. First and 10 to go on their 20. We have a scoreless game. The battle of the defenses. Here's Carter throwing the pass. In and out of Cecil Turner's fingers at the 30 yard line. And the only bad thing about one of those is that uh, it's, even, you know, it's, it's not caught, but when the ball is deflected kind of up in the air like that, and all those green jerseys are going for a jump, it kind of gives you a little heart failure. It sure does. So you see that ball hit the ground with fellas like Adderley oh. and Brown and Jeter out there anyway. And you'd expect them really to hold on to that ball. You know, that was pretty well thrown and he had a nice open field there for a substantial well, game but he just had a finger on the thing not enough really to hold possession here we go jack second down 10 bears ball on their own 20 yard line no score in the second quarter at green bay three eligible receivers to the right Carter sweeps around to the left there almost a naked reverse this time a naked keeper and he is hit hard coming up with Mitski who did a kind of a semicircle, almost a figure eight before it was over, but he finally zeroed in on the ball carrier when he finally realized that Carter was carrying the ball himself. He hit him a jarring tackle you can hear up here, wide, wide in the open. Oh, boy. Well, one thing about Mr. Carter is somebody said you can't fall his career. This kid can take those hard bumps and still keep coming. Ball on the 25-yard line. Third down, five. He gets many more hits in the head like that. We'll make a sports announcer out of him, though. Third down, five, 10.58 to go in the second quarter. Out of the huddle they go. Put away to the left is Gordon. In the spot to the left is Gail Sayers. The only man in this ace backfield then is Ronnie Bull. He is almost directly behind the quarterback. And here's the whistle. They've taken too much time. they got the play underway. 30 seconds is all they're allowed. And they are going to be the victims of a five-yard walk-off. Putting the ball back now to the 20-yard line. That means now it's going to be third down and 10. Third down, 10 for the Chicago Bears. They huddle back on the 10-yard line. Bob Wachowska started today on the offense. is still in there for the Bears. Ball on to see him back in action. Mike Rabel is in the hotel. Uh, up here to see the game with his beautiful wife, Kathy, from Bloomington, Indiana, today. Sat around with uh, Ed and Virginia McCaskey of the Bears family and uh, with some yarns last night. It was a lot of fun. Snap. Back goes the ball. Carter, look, he waits. He throws up the middle. And he hits Wallace at the 35-yard line. He's down almost immediately. He was surrounded quickly by Adderley, by Nitschke, who was backed up, and by Willie Wood coming up from the secondary. But he still made himself a good pass, good for 15 yards. And that gives the Bears a first down. First and 10 for the Bears as Virgil Carter finds the range. Wallace, by Wallace. 
Uh, as Tom told you, the game plan went to they apparently appears to be step on the ground and uh, a little rock em and sock em. Here's the snap. Back goes Carter once more. Here's the pass up the middle, and again, he hits his man this time. It's Turner who falls down making the catch, but he did make the catch at the 47-yard line. Completed pass. Two straight complete passes almost to the same spot, right up the middle, just over the line by Virgil Carter. Once to Wallace, once to Turner. Good for 12 yards that last time. That's going to make it first and 10. Wallace put away. Turner and uh, Dick Gordon here to the right, and here he is. Carter rolling around, he fakes the pass, now he waits, he reverses himself, gets away from uh, the tackle, he's across midfield, and he slams hard to the ground by Robinson, moving inside the 45 at the 44-yard line, and Big Dave Robinson, the huge linebacker for Green Bay, 6'3", 240, a six-year vet, one of the most agile of all linebackers in the league, really slammed that kid hard. He almost... Rolled him up and put an apple in his mouth and handed him to the Packers on the bench because that's where the play wound it up. Boy, he really hit him. Time out. Him up and uh, he, uh, Carter almost disappeared with the yeah. after time <laughs> They're going to measure to see if it's a first down. The ball is at the 44-yard line. Virgil Carter managed to outrun Bob Brown, the defensive end on that play, pretty well. And this is what sprang in then for the good run. About two feet shy, Mike Pyle in the game to the rest of the ball club. 7.42 to go in the second quarter. No score here at Green Bay. The Packers and the Bears battling away here at Green Bay. They're going to go for it on fourth down. They have the ball to the Green Bay 44-yard line. They're going to go for it. Ooh, brother, what a gamble this is. And Carter loses the football. He falls on for a loss on the play, and Green Bay takes over at the 46. There was a flag down on the play. There was a flag down. And the walk-off is against Green Bay. Oh, the Bears going to break on that one. Woo, boy, offside against the Packers. That gives the Bears their first down. The ball on the 39-yard line that off Green Bay. How about that ball to When you do get a penalty, you really need something. Huh? That was really a break because as Jack pointed out, Carter and his anxiety and eagerness to pass off the ball, fumbled the take from center and uh, barely recovered it. And then the offside penalty, of course, made it possible for the Bears to continue their drive. Here we go, Jack. Okay, there's a big break. The ball on the 39. Bears ball on the pack of 39. No score. First and 10. Carter back. He has time. He has protection. He waits. He throws that ball. And it is intercepted by Brown at the 14. He's at the 20, the 25, the 30. And is knocked down at the 32-yard line by Cecil Turner. Virgil Carter going for the longest pass he's thrown so far today. He was going for the bomb, as they say. And uh, the Packers must have smelled that one coming early because there were three defenders all ready to really engulf that ball. And it was Tom Brown who did it. The Packers ball now on their own. 33 yard line, first and 10. Seven minutes and seven seconds remaining in the second quarter at Green Bay. Green Bay out of the huddle. Boy Dollars to the right, flanked out here to the left now is Carol Dale, two wonderful receivers. Here's Bart Starr, makes the hand off to fifth, he wants to throw, he waits, he finally throws out here, and the plan is caught by Mars running the tight end, he advances across the 40, to the 43 yard line. Down by Jimmy Purnell, the linebacker on the right for the Bears. Green Bay may have themselves a first down on that play. It is a first down. Putting them off between the 43 and 44 yard line. Give them another yard on that one. That makes it now first and 10 for the Bears. The Packers on their own 44. First and 10. Ball on the 24. Dollar to the right. Carol Dale to the right. Deuce Brackfield. Donnie Anderson. And also Elijah Pitts. Almost shoulder to shoulder. Directly behind the quarterback. Bart Starr. Boom over the ball. Single being barked out. Five minutes of the rest of the Bears. The handoff now to Donnie Anderson. Sweeps around the left side. Gary Kramer blocking for him a little bit. And he advances the ball to midfield. Hit by two or three Bears. First man to make contact with the phone. Helped by Joe Taylor and also Jimmy Purnell on the play. Ball just shy of midfield. And referee Haggerty's going to spot it down. Now, Lloyd Phillips of the Bears is uh, shaking his fist in that huddle, that defensive huddle, and employing these guys. Come on now, let's hold them. We can do it. This fellow's really come to life for this ball club this year. Lloyd Phillips, a high draft choice. He was out with a lot of injury problems last year. But, man, this big, tough guy is in there for a while now, it looks like. He stands 6'3", weighs 240, this kid from Arkansas, and he's rough and tough. Second down. 
Four yards to go for the first down. Green Bay's ball. The handoff to a pitch off right guard. He goes. He's got a lot of blocking. Yeah, he's got a big hole, and he's well into their territory at the Bears' 37-yard line. Tripped up by Pettibone, knocked off balance, and down by Joe Taylor. Ooh, man. Just inside the Bears' 18, off the 18-yard line. First and 10 now for the Green Bay Packers, and that's about as big a hole as Mr. Pitts has had today, and he's had a couple of good ones. A 13-yard gain on that play. Jack is empty. Bart Starr has thrown four times so far today and completed four. He hasn't missed the pass yet so far. Although on one attempted pass, he was thrown for a 13-yard loss by Edel Bradbridge in the bad defense. Here we go, Jack. They're lined up. Here's Starr back again. He throws, and he hits his man. He hits it. And Darrell Dale at the very 25. As Mark Starr tries to pick that third defense apart now with those pinpoint passing yards of that. That one was good for 13. Pass completion, 13 yards, 12 yards, 11 yards. These are the kinds of passes that Mark Starr is making good in the course of steady marches. Put the Bear down inside the 25-yard line at the Bear 24. Timeout. 4.13 to go in the second quarter. No score. We'll return with more action in just a minute. They have the ball at the Bears' 24-yard line. First and 10 for Green Bay. No score, but there's a big threat going now. The best the Packers have had. Here's Pitt. Starts off left tackle. There's a little hole there. He's brought, however, to a fast standing stop. And finally slammed to the ground by Pettibone and by Butkus. Butkus, by the way, looks like the old Dick Butkus here so far this afternoon. He's rough and tough. The ball has been advanced to the Bears' 22-yard line. Give him about two on that last play. Call it second down. Just a little over eight yards to go for, or a little less than eight yards to go for the first down. Three minutes, 43 seconds to go in the first half here at Green Bay. The Bear defense and the Packer defense have certainly handled themselves beautifully so far this afternoon. It's been a defensive afternoon. Dollar and Dale both way to the right. Mark Fleming tight left end, very close to the left tackle on this play. Bowman snaps the ball to Spark Star, rolls out to the right bar, now looks. Throws to the left, and it is. He bucks it away by Purnell. The target was Elijah Pitts. It's simply an incomplete pass at the 12-yard line. Incomplete, and of course you have to say the Packers are within field goal range now. A man who tried their previous field goal has no field goals at all this year. He does have four extra points. Mercine has one, and uh, Kramer has four for Green Bay, but Bankson decided to use man to try the uh, one field goal effort the Packers have made so far today. 3.26 to go in the first half of Green Bay. This is any uh, Jack Dick Buckers play that uh, last one perfectly, knowing just when to drop back to defend against uh, the pass. And Dick, incidentally, is playing with a tremendous pain of some bruised ribs. Uh, but he's in there playing, as Jack said, in his typical ferocious style. Here we go for the field goal. Field goal effort from the 34. Here's the boot. Look out now. It is no good. It had the distance, but it did not have the direction. So again, the Bears are able to take over that ball after a Packer field goal attempt. First and 10 on the 20-yard line, and the Packers rather have it for the moment. It is now. Bears ball, first and 10 to go, 3.17 to go in the first half. Time out of the field. We'll return with more action in just one minute. The Chicago Bears, who have a chance to go in first place today, if they can beat these Green Bay Packers, have the ball in the North 20. Carter hands off to Gail Sayers, and the slant play finds Gail. Rolling uh, real hard across the 25 on that slant. He refused to give up. Bob Dieter finally was able to hang on to it like a bulldog, but not before Gale made himself eight on the play, making it second down two, putting the ball up the 28-yard line. No score. Two minutes and 58 seconds to go in the first half here at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. Dick Gordon trotting off the field. At halftime, a couple wrap things up, have some outstanding guests for you. Following the game, we'll have scores from all over. Our guest is going to be Max McGee, the famous pass catcher in the first Super Bowl, which Green Bay won. Here's the staff, Carter handing off the stairs, tries the right side, there's a little hole, he moves out here to the secondary from the 40, 45, he picks up the top there, turns the blockers, cuts to the left, he may do it, the 35, the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, and down the nine-yard line. Oh, brother, Gale Sayers, no flag on the play, has pulled that ball all the way down to the Green Bay nine-yard line. Willie Wood finally caught him at rather 63 yards on that one, and the Bears have first and goal to go. This is one of the few times, if not the first time, that Sayers has run to the right all day. Time out. We'll be back with the action in just a minute. We have a score of ball game. Two minutes to go in the first half, going on the clock here at Lambeau Field. Dutton 
Here's some late scores here, Jack, while we're waiting for the two-minute warning to take effect. Baltimore is now in three to speed over New York to 16 to nothing. Baltimore 16, New York nothing. And uh, Dallas is leading New Orleans 7 to nothing in the second period. And Pittsburgh 28 to nothing over Atlanta in the third period. It's finally showing of the year, of course, by Pittsburgh, which barely won its first game of the year against Philadelphia. Last off. Here's the handoff. Fake now by Carter. Roll to the right. He may run with the ball. He's inside the five. He's at the two-yard line, the three-yard line. It's hard. A knockdown by Willie Davis. And Carter shaking up on that play is a little slow getting up. Tom Brown also got involved. Dave Robinson got uh, in there for some help on the play, but Willie Davis is the fellow who did it initially. And now, here comes Mac Percival on the field. Davis making it up. Well, with uh, three seconds to go, he kicked a 47-yard field goal last week. Now, with 47 seconds to go, he's coming in to kick a three-yard field goal. Clock ticking away. Mac Percival will attempt a field goal. Ralph Keurig has come in to do a little blocking. Well, Bradovich is in to do a little blocking on this play. John Johnson remains in. Richie Pettibon will hold. Looks like uh, Willie Holman is also in to help out on the, on the uh, blocking. And Wayne Moss. Mike Riley has come in. And now what? Well, the Bears may be taking a little bit of a delay here, and they may want that ball walk back five yeah, yards. Too close, Jack, and they can get a better perspective and a better uh, angle if they move the ball back five yards. But the Green Bay Packers refuse to give it to them. Why the they it. <laughs> That's the first time you'll probably you ever see one of the rare balls you'll ever see a five-yard penalty decline in that spot. Okay, Percival will kick that from the 10-yard line on the angle. Here's the boot. It is up. It is good. No doubt about it. And so, with 16 seconds to go, that is the 10th straight field goal kicked by Mac Percival and the score. The Chicago Bears 3, the Green Bay Packers nothing. Let's take five seconds for a station break. This is the WGN Chicago Bears Football Network. Earl Mann is going to kick off the deep end for the Bears starting this third quarter with the Bears ahead, three to nothing, on Matt Percival's last minute field goal there. Fine Gordon and Gale Sayers as the deep man. Here's the run up, here's the boot, here's the wobbly one. It bounces, picked up by Sayers at the 10, he's at the 20, the 25, 30, 35, running hard, grabbed by the jersey, and finally it's brought down by a swarm of Packers. The first man to reach a flat car all the way up to the uh, Green Bay Packer 45-yard line. Man, did he want to shake loose again. He ran for 63 yards. The first half has set up the only score of this football game up till now. Bears ball, first and ten to go. Put the ball on the Packer 44-yard line. First to of the quarterback. The Bears three, Green Bay nothing here. That Green Bay pile over that ball on the left seals on his right. Cadillo, the two guards, the tackle, Jackson and Wataska. Austin Denny, the tight left end. They're shoulder to shoulder down there. Hand off to Gail Sayers. Going off the left side, and he has got first down yardage, it looks like, as he moves off the left guard spot, the left side of the bear line, doing some good blocking that time, and moving. If it's uh, possible to do it, I suppose that kind of blocking can do it. Fellows like Henry Jordan and Lionel Aldridge and also the right linebacker Crappy. Did they make it? They certainly did. At first drive now for the Bears. They moved inside the 35 to the 34 yard line of the Green Bay Packers. They're huddling back on the 45. Young Virgil Carter, the quarterback, uh, off to the left of the play. Also, I see that uh, Forrest Gregg and Bob Brown conferring. Make that uh, Bob Brown and uh, the defensive average, and here is Carter rolling out to the right. He's going to carry the ball. He's at the 30, the 25, and he's down very hard. Hit by Herb Adderley, who rode him out of bounds and then landed right on top right. of him. And right. Carter picks himself up right, right away. He's a tough kid. And it looks like another first down for the Bears. Yes, sir. That puts the ball at the 23-yard line of the Green Bay Thunders. The, uh, the boys are still at it. They're really oh, talking it to them as we said they have to, and they've been staying on the ground here in the first half as they move down the field very nicely. Of course, with Gail Sayers in there, the threat is always there that the Green Bay Packers have to watch for very, very carefully, and sometimes you can counter 
because of that spread of Gale Sayers. Here we go, Jack. They have a slot formation right. In the slot to the right this time is Bull. A handoff to Brian Piccolo, relieving Sayers, and he runs back into Mr. Dave Robinson, who says, come to me, baby. I'm going to pick you up and just cuddle you for a minute. And then will slam into the ground. Robinson Ran right into him. And he almost sealed the Piccolo like a man fielding a, a, a wide drive that time. <coughs> Piccolo is one of the great second effort men. Piccolo out in for one play that time. Austin Denny is also trotting out. With third down. Second down. Uh, rather, second down now. Nine yards to go. The ball is on the Green Bay Packer. 22 and a half yard line. Bears out in front. Three to nothing. Virgil Carter looking left and right. Four men on the rush. and four defensive backs now. Here's a quick opener as Honey Bo explodes over the middle and gets down to the 23. The 16 yard line. Tom Brown, the secondary man, making the tackle. That was a real quick opener, and actually, I kind of looked for Ronnie to go farther on that play. Just between uh, the tackle, Randy Jackson, Austin, and Denny is Ronnie Bull. The handoff to Sayers. He cuts inside just where Bull was. He's at the five, the three yard line. Knocked down, caught from behind by Dave Robinson. Also helping on that tackle. Big Bob Brown. And now it's going to be second down for the Bears. They have that ball at the three and a half yard line of the Green Bay Packers. And the Bear offensive line is doing outstanding work at this moment in this game. 9.43 to go. We're in the third quarter to Green Bay. It is second down. About a yard to go for first down. Three and a half to go for the touchdown for the Chicago Bears. Watch this one. Big play coming up, maybe. Deuce backfield, Ronnie Bull and Sayers almost shoulder to shoulder, less than a yard apart of the backfield. The handoff goes to Ronnie Bull, head down, he bores in, and he's way shy of the goal line by about a yard and a half. And that's considerable distance by uh, these terms. And under these conditions, but he still managed to get some yardage on the play, possibly enough for a first down. Bob Brown, the bottom man on the tackle, and out comes the chain gang to see if it is a first down. And if it is, the Bears will have first and goal to go at the two. It's going to be close. I don't believe he's going to make it on this one. Nope, he's about, oh, I'd say five or six inches shy. No yeah, more. That's all. Yes, of the first down. Third down. Well, if you were Carter, would you risk assassination here by a quarterback sneak cup? I guess that's his uh, number one choice, I would say. Here's the snap, and it's a keeper, and he's got it easy. Oh, standing up, Virgil Carter, breaking the handoff, two breaks up for all around the left side, and about six or seven of his own men gang up on him. Mike Howe, George Steele, prodding him on the back. He's so turning, oh, did he look quick on that one. That was a beautiful play called just at the right time. The psychological point was that they were watching Gale there and on the sweep to the other side. And Carter did the right thing. He faked it to Gale and kept it as well. Hit it on his hip and then sprinted it around left in for the touchdown. Incidentally, Jack, the Bears marched down the field without the use of one forward pass. Here we go for the extra point. The boot by Percival is perfect. 8.37 to go in the third quarter. And the score of this game is now the Chicago Bears 10, the Green Bay Packers nothing. And we'll be returning with the kickoff in just one minute. Green Bay's ball, first and ten to go. Bears out in front, ten to nothing. Here's the snap, the fake handoff, and here is a pass out in the flat. It is caught by Elijah Vince at the 20. He's at the 25, and upended by Richie Pettibon. The crusher tackle put on him by Dick Butkus at the 27 28 yard line. Very close to first down yard. He's put out for it here in this uh, fourth quarter coming up here in the uh, remainder of the third quarter because if the Bears are still ahead, it uh, will be fairly evident that Fox Star will go to the air more than ever in order to try to move that ball and move it in a hurry. And of course, nobody, but nobody in this world can milk a clock like Star. Nobody can spot those little bitty weaknesses, those chinks in the armor better than he can. He's one of the cleverest quarterbacks that's ever come down the pike. Boyd Dollar way to the right, Carroll Dale in the slot to the right, second down, 10. The ball is 30, and back goes Star once more. He backs up to his 20, throws up the middle, and here is the flag down. As the intended receiver, Anderson, was tackled out in the open while the ball was still in the air at the 44-yard line. Richie Pettibon and Butkus were both after him on that one. Butkus had backed up to anticipate... 
the play, and I think Dick is the one who put the tackle on him. That'll be first and ten. That goes as pass interference. The linebacker, incidentally, has an interesting instinct that he has to develop as regards that kind of a play. Whether to rush or whether to back up and uh, help out on pass defense. This is something he has to make up his mind. For one thing, uh, he has to watch the quarterback's eyes a lot. First and ten then, the ball is at the 44-yard line of Green Bay. Elijah Pitts over the middle. He's got a little daylight. He advances the ball to near midfield at the 49-yard line. Tackle made again by Lloyd Phillips, who's been playing some real rough, tough, hard-nosed football for the Bears the last few weeks particularly. A little yardage on the play. Give him six altogether, and that makes it now second down, four yards to go for a first down. Third down. Just about. Four yards to go for a first down. The ball squarely at midfield. Green Bay's ball. Bears ahead, 10 to nothing in this quarter. And there is Starr dropping back. He pumps, and now he throws way down here, and it's going to be a touchdown. Third down, 
And 10 yards to go for a first down. The Bears still have the ball on their own 49-yard line. Third down. Now, uh, this is the kind of a situation at which Barstow excels. This is what makes him a great quarterback, the ability to get 10 yards in a spot like this on third down and long yardage. Let's see if Virgil Carter can come up with the right play. Brian Piccolo is slotted out to the left. Here's Carter. He drops back again. Willie Davis has a little rush on him, and he loses the ball. There's a battle for it at the 41-yard line, and the Bears have recovered. Oh, boy. Huge loss on the play. They almost lost the football to Green Bay. The fellow recovered was Bob Wachowska for the Bears. The tackle was backed up to uh, protect and do a little pass blocking for Carter. Wachowska, incidentally, gave one of the great blocks on that run of Gale Sayers, that 63-yard run, which set up the field goal as it turned out in the first half. First and down their own 41 yard line. Bears ahead 10 to 7. 319 to go in the third quarter. Bart Starr gets the ball, moves out to his left. Cocks the arm, throws way down there. First time he's been in, there's a flag down. The backers were hollering their heads off. Butchers collided with Slavowski, the two line eye, giving each other a hard time, and it could be we'll have an interference ruling against the Bears. That's what it is, all right. That gives the Packers first down on the Bear 45-yard line. Jim Grabowski in for the first time this afternoon. Here's the final score. The St. Louis Cardinals 45, the Philadelphia Eagles 17. Hugh Herrick and the Eagles are now 0-8. Now the Chicago Bears. Wide first and 10, Green Bay. Double slot left. The handoff to Grabowski. Over left side going to Jim Blocking, or rather the Bears defense by the blocking, and the right side of the Bears defense just barely to the right of center as Kenny Bowman and Jerry Kramer did some fine blocking, along with uh, Gail Gillingham on that one. He's second down, 10, Green Bay's ball on the Chicago Bear 30-yard line. The clock now shows two minutes and 46 seconds to go in the third quarter. The Bear defense certainly has its work cut out for it as we set the closing out the first half. Look for the Bear a pass defense to really have its work cut out for here in this next uh, several minutes. And back goes Starr once more. Here's the pass. He hits his man. He hits Dale at the 19-yard line. But flat out, just a little bit away from a flat pass. And did he or did he not make first down yardage? He did. The snap, the handoff goes to Grabowski. Over the middle goes Jimmy. And even though he is up at it, knocked off balance as he gets through that hole on the right side of the line, just to the right of center, he still managed to move the ball down to the 11-yard line, where it becomes third down, a yard to go for first down. Third down, and one. And the Packers, if they do not get first down on this next play, are going to have a decision to make. Should they go for the tying field goal, or should they press on to try to get the touchdown? Well, that's uh, anticipating a little far in advance because right now we have to concentrate on this very next play to see what happens on third down and a yard to go, a little over a yard to go for first down. The ball at the Chicago Bear 11-yard line. Watch it now. They're all lined up. Bowman. Snaps the ball to Starr. The handoff now on the slow count to Williams. He streaks it on the left side, and it's going to be close. I don't know whether he made first down yardage or not. I don't think he did. He's no. down. No. As he tried to turn no. the corner by Purnell and Dick Butkus, who threw his body through the air. That's 240 pounds real well. And broke up that play as Williams tried to turn the corner. And now, in comes Chuck Mercine, who was going to attempt a field goal. Looks like Chuck Mercier, who was certainly a real find for these fellows last year. Coming oh, oh. from New Trier, That's from Mercier. Yale. The kick will come from right about the 19-yard line. The line of scrimmage is the 11 and a half, and there goes the gun. The third quarter is ended, so the first play of the fourth quarter, no doubt, will be a field goal effort to score. At the end of the third quarter, the Bears 10, the Green Bay Packers 7. We're just about to start the fourth quarter. 
of what has turned into another typical Green Bay Bear football game. A lot of head bumping. You can hear the bone and muscle colliding up here in the booth where we are. The first play of this fourth quarter is going to be Chuck Mercine's field goal effort from the 19-yard line. Barstar will hold. Here's the kick. It is good. And so the score of the game is now the Bears 10, Green Bay 10. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a minute. Now, the kick, and the ball bounces away from Tim Gordon, and is down in the end zone by Gordon, I believe. It's very, very close. Wait a minute, safety. We have room of safety against the Bears. Gordon actually made contact with the ball, the official's opinion, on about the one-foot line, slid under the end zone and down it there, and consequently... It's the impetus that provided the ball, ball moving into the end zone was provided by the Bears. They, I believe, have rules safety for Green Bay, which, of course, would give them the lead. Wait a minute. Now what? Well, it's being the case, of course, the Bears have to kick off in their 20-yard line and give Green Bay the ball and the two points. Right now, the score looks to be the Packers... Wait a minute, I guess not, Cup. Apparently they changed it. At first they gave the signal for a safety, and now just an ordinary touchback. The Bears have possession of the ball on the 20-yard line, and the score is still 10-10. They Boy. took away the safety, which was the original decision by the official. And the Packer fans are booing and booing and booing. They think it should have been a safety all the way. One official raced over there, and... Uh, in the gesture which indicates the safety, which he held his palms together, pointed upward, hands high above his head, and that is definitely a safety call. And it was backed up by another official who was near there who gave the same sign. We automatically, and so did all the other people here, think that the Bears have been uh, put at a disadvantage in the game by a safety. But instead, they ruled it a touchback. Bears ball, first and ten, and listen to this crowd boo. All right, Bears ball, first and ten of their own, 20-yard line. The game is still tied at 10 to 10. We're in the fourth quarter. Here's a handoff to Bears, a quick opener, and Gale loses the football. It's a battle at the 30-yard line. The Bears recover. Two Bears making a dive for the ball as it squirts out of Gale's hands, and the fellow who fell on it was Ronnie Bull. Both he and Cecil Turner made a real fast reflex dive for the ball. Actually, the Bears gained a few yards on the fumble, putting the ball just inches away from a first down at the almost the 30-yard line. Bears ball first and ten, and from here on out, you're going to separate the men from the boys in this game. 14, 15 to go. Game tied, 10 to 10. The handoff to Sayers, he's got his first down and he hangs on to the football, he's still going, second effort, and he moves all the way to the 42-yard line before Willie Wood managed to hang on with a real uh, tenacious grip, and that was close because it looked like Gale had managed to bounce away from everybody, including Willie, but Willie grabbed that one leg and held on. First and ten for the Bears, as Sayers rips off some more yardage. Moving the ball up to the 42-yard line. May 12 on that last play. First and 10 Bears. They're out there now where a couple of good games now will put them in Packer territory in an impressive manner. Here's Carter. He looks for a receiver, looks like. Goes, and he hits Piccolo. Good catch by Bryant. He's across midfield at the 48-yard line. And credit Piccolo on that plant play with a very fine catch. Bryant Piccolo. Isn't that relieving Gale Sayers momentarily, as he has uh, so frequently today? 11 yards on that play. Let's pause five seconds for a station break. This is the WGN Chicago Bears Football Network. WGN Radio Chicago, where you can hear the Bulls and the Blackhawks and Illinois and Michigan next uh, Saturday at 12.10. Fourth period, Baltimore 26, New York nothing. Final, Pittsburgh 41, Atlanta 21. Deuce backfield for the Bears. And here's Carter running around to the right. He's going to try to outrun everybody. He outruns Aldridge. He's at the point. He collides with his own man on the far side of the field and is knocked down. Oh, 
brother, both Virgil Carter and Bob Wallace, who would run downfield and then start it back. And started back to see if he could do a little blocking, I guess. Ran into his own man, Carter, and knocked almost both of them cold. There's one of the uh, most freaky things I've ever seen in the Open Field Cup. That certainly is hard to understand. How a man out there to block runs into his own man and knocks him down, almost knocks him out. And that is one of the... And there's a penalty on the play on top of that. And add to the embarrassment, a penalty... You don't suppose they're charging Wallace with unnecessary roughness against his own teammate, do you? We've had everything else happen today here. There's that a 15-yard penalty here, Jack, for grabbing the face mask. Now, how about the offensive team getting a penalty for grabbing a face mask? That's usually a defensive maneuver. And here the Bears are slapped with that 15-yard penalty. Well, let's keep the rally going anyway. 15-yard penalty against the Chicago Bears. The ball is on the 43-yard line of the Bears. And right now, second down, 20 yards to go for a first down for the Bears. Second down, 20, the ball game tied 10 to 10. 11.49 to go here at Green Bay. We're in the fourth quarter. Here's Carter dropping back. He waits, he waits. He now moves out of the pocket. He throws, and it's incomplete. It's by Cheater at the 44. He picks himself up. He moves up to the 50-yard line. He is down nearly at midfield. The ball deflected out of the hands of the intended receiver, and Bob Jeter, with a great reflex effort, managed to pick that ball up in the air about six inches off the ground. He fell down, scrambled to his feet. The play was still in motion. It had not been dead. Consequently, he was allowed to keep on going, and he advanced it back to the 49-yard line of Green Bay, and look out now. 11.36 to go in this football game as Bart Starr with a ball game all tied at 10 to 10. Then the left side heavy with intended receivers or possible receivers, but he gives the ball to Anderson, who sweeps around the right side, loses the ball, is grabbed in the air by Purnell. And let's see if we're, oh, Jimmy Purnell may be thrown out of the game. He's so angry. That's Gary Bergman, the headline who rules that it's not a recovered fumble by the Bears. Now, oh, wait a minute. The Bears offensive field has come out in the field, and Bergman has been overruled. He first started to say no, although it's possible that what he might have been telling Jimmy was, you cannot advance the ball, you're out of bounds. And Jimmy may have misunderstood him. But anyway, the Bears own that football. Anderson, after ripping off a pretty good gain, lost the ball and popped up in the air, and Jimmy Purnell snatched it out of the air. His foot did go out of bounds near the Packer bench. And the Bears had the ball now, first and ten to go on their own 42-yard line. Talk about excitement, we've got it now. We're in the last 11 minutes and 13 seconds. Here's Sayers sweeping around the left side, and he moves up to the 48-yard line. Banks the ball angrily on the ground as he's down, mad at himself, unhappy, because he was unable to escape Leroy Caffey, who knocked him off balance and down. Dale Sayers all worked up, really charged up, as are all the rest of the Bears in this football game. Very, very unhappy with himself because he didn't go all the way on that play. Of course, he gets unhappy when he doesn't go all the way on every play. That's the kind of an intense football player he is. Second down, four to go, made six on that last one. Gary Lyle is put away to the right. He's a spread, and in the slot to the right now, Cecil Turner. And you have Sayers and Ronnie Bull in the deuce backfield. Here's uh, somebody going across the line a little early. Gail Sayers runs with the ball flag down all over the place. He sweeps out to the right. He's at the 40, the 35. We've been bothered to get down to the 31-yard line. Now, the question is, is that penalty against the Bears or against the Green Bay Packers? If it's against the Packers, the Bears will probably decline. And if it's against the Bears, the Packers will accept it just about as happily as they've accepted anything in their lives. It is offside Packers. We saw the Packers offside, but you can't call that until you make sure because it's possible that a motion by the uh, Bear opposite that man on the line may have drawn him across, in which case the onus is on the offensive ball club. They put the lights on here now at Lambeau Field. Dale Sayers ripping off 21 yards on that play. The play stands up. The Bears have the ball. First and 10 to go on the Packer 31-yard line. 10 minutes and 23 seconds to go in this football game. She's all tied up now, 10 to 10. And this is happening for uh, a game somewhat similar to the game we had up here last year with Green Bay and the Bears. Let's hope we don't have the same finish because with the game tied 10 to 10, with seconds to go, Chandler kicked a deep field goal. This 
Could it be like we last week's game too, Jack? At least we have a 10 to 10 game going into the final minutes, uh, maybe. I don't know. We've got a lot of time left. Nine minutes to go. Here's a pass over the line caught by Cecil Turner on the uh, rather uh, Brian Piccolo out there in the flat, and he advanced the ball to the 22 yard line. A little shy of first down yardage. On the third down, long yardage effort. Give them nine on the play, but they had a little over ten to go. Now here comes Mac Percival in once more as Mac tries to make his 11th consecutive field goal. He made one earlier today. 8.30 to go. The clock continues to move here at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'm Jack Brickcross, along with Irv Kutner and Frank Babcock. And we've got ourselves a real rouser again today. The Bears and the Packers, the 99th meeting of these two ball clubs. Matt Percival will attempt to kick one now from the 29-yard line of Green Bay. Ricky Pettibone, who was groggy a little while ago, is okay now. He will hold the place down. The ball is dropped. The kick is dropped. And there's a battle for the ball, and it's down by a Green Bay Packer at the 20-yard line. Rolling on that ball was Bob Dieter. Bob Dieter fell on the ball, and I'm not so sure but what he's the fellow who may have blocked it, too. And so Green Bay takes the ball, first and ten to go now on their 20-yard line. And uh, Mac Percival's string is broken. 8-0-3 to go. Time out. We'll return with more action in just one minute. Game tied. 10-10. Ten ten. We're in the final eight minutes of this action. Second down, 10. Once again, Bart Starr backpedals. He looks. He waits. He waits. He may run. He's smeared. Abradovich got to him. He waited too long. As a matter of fact, he finally collided with Forrest Gregg, his own tackle, who's backed up for pass protection. Okay. And then as Bart saw a big hole there, saw nobody open, so maybe he tried to make a little yardage. He kind of bumped into his own man, and that slowed him up enough so that the loss carries all the way back to the 14-yard uh, line. It now becomes third down, and here's Bart Starr. Here's the kind of a situation that has made Bart Starr, Bart Starr. Third down and 16 to go. Now, the Bears need to hold here, but this guy is so good at picking the right player and the right play for this particular long yardage type pass. Let's see what he comes up with now. He sends Claudie James, who just came in way out to the left. Trotted to the left now is Dale. Here he is looking left, now right, now left, back up to the goal line. He's almost at the end zone. He starts to run. He caught the arm. He's at the 20, the 25. He is knocked out of bounds. He is knocked out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. The Bears had real good pass protection going that time. And Bart Starr, who had backed up all the way where he was one foot in the end zone, made it almost back to first down yard. He's just going to be very, very close. And Starr, incidentally, was shaken up a little on the play, and so was one of the Bears who bumped him out of bounds. Bart Starr, running with the football. Oh, boy, if he does this again. Of course, the Bears are claimed to have only had 10 men on the field in that last one that last year, although we haven't been sure. Hang, hang on to your hats and fasten your seatbelts because from here on out, this one is liable to be something. Six minutes and 55 seconds. Game tied 10 to 10. Here's Carter. And the handoff to Gale Sayers. Picks his way. Finds a little hole. Moves up to the 40-yard line. So number 40 carries to the 40. He's got five, maybe six yards on the play. Cecil Turner in the slot to the left. You have Bullen Sayers in the deuce backfield for the Bears. Carter hands off to Sayers. He sweeps out to the right side. But he can't. Wait a minute. Trouble. And it's picked up by a Packer. It's picked up by Adderley. He is caught from behind at the 16-yard line by Turner. Dale Sayers tackled as he starts out to the right side. Ball down. Loses the ball. Grabbed by Herb Adderley. And the Packers have a chance to go out and run now. With that ball returned all the way to the Bear 14-yard line by Herb Annerley. Oh, brother, what a heartbreaking development for Bear fans. 5.57 to go in this game. The ball on the 14-yard line. First and 10 now for the Green Bay Packers. And this is a made-order situation for Bart Starr. The Bear defense has a human job cut out for it now. They're all lined up. First and 10 to go. On the bear 14, here is a handoff to Anderson. He goes out to the right side, blowed up by Joe Taylor and knocked down by Buffon and Buck. Just he got one, maybe two on the play. Here's the snap star, handing off again to Anderson. 
He sweeps around the left side. He tries to turn the corner, and he's knocked down. Off balance by Joe Taylor. Moving up from the secondary. Hardly any gain on the play. Possibly a yard, possibly nothing. Let's see where they decide to spot the ball. They bring it up in the sidelines. He actually lost a little on the play. It's going to be third down now as the Bear defense continues to try to hold these Green Bay Packers. Willie Holman racing up from the sidelines. He has replaced Lloyd Phillips for the Bears. Third down for the Pack. Just about eight yards to go for a first down. Here's the signal. The snap. The handoff to Anderson. He's going to throw a left-handed pass maybe. He may have to run with it. Here's Holman. He's got him down at the 16-yard line. Chuck Mercine is in there. He is going to attempt a field goal. The kick will come from just about the 22-yard line with three minutes and 43 seconds showing on the clock. Barstar will hold the place down. The kick is in the air. Wait a minute. No good. No good. No good. And the Bears take over on the 20-yard line. Oh, brother. Woo. Next time you come by, bring my stomach. And here the score is 10 10 and what is changing up as another one of those flip hanging finishes, Jack. Turner in the slot to the right. He spreads Gary Wild out there as a flanker. Austin Denny is a tight left end. Here's a handoff to Sayers. He cuts inside Cadeal, and he spins away from a couple of men. A fumble, battle for the ball at the 25-yard line. The Bears recover. Game all tied, 10-10. Out of the huddle they come. First and 10 for the Bears. The ball is on their own 31. Here's Virgil Carter rolling out to the right. Blocked by Cadeal and Wataska. Rolls around the right side. Fights away from Robinson. He's at the 40. Spins away and gets up to the 45-yard line. Virgil Carter coming up with a very fine movement against Robinson, the linebacker, one of the surest tacklers in the game of football. Now, it is first and 10 for the Bears on their own 45-yard line. Here's the snap, Carter back, puts his down the ball, it's batted up in the air as he starts forward with it, it'll probably be ruled an incomplete pass, but the rush was on, he was met by Jordan, by Willie Davis, who got through there, Lyle Aldridge crashed in, and so did Brown, they all got on him, as a matter of fact, Brown obscures him from sight, the way he's draped over him, and that goes then as, wait a minute, they're not ruling that an incomplete pass, they are ruling that a play. And the ball is down at the 40-yard line. They are, and the, the officials are conferring, and one of the officials are, are you sure that's not an incomplete pass? He is not in motion, but apparently, apparently now, the Bears are going to have to punt the football. With 1.10 to go, John Kilgore standing on his 25-yard line. He'll kick from about the 29. And there's the pass to center. He gets the kick away. It's end over end. It's just a fair punt, but it takes a bare bounce. Takes a bounce on the deep man at the 15-yard line, but he hangs on to it. Willie Wood. He was hit by Major Hazelton coming down very fast. Tried to deflect the ball and dislodge it from uh, Willie Wood's grip. It's the Packers ball now with 56 seconds to go. 45 yards net from scrimmage. It was not exactly a fisher foot punt, but it got the job done. So now... The Packers are the ones who are, if anything, in the driver's seat in the game. Let's see what Bart Starr does. How about a nice interception, fellas? Here's Starr throwing up the sideline. Oh, brother, Joe Taylor nearly intercepted that when he made a dive in front of Carol Dale at the sideline. 48 seconds to go in the game. They're all tied up here now. 10 to 10, the Bears and the Packers. Head bumping like crazy today. You rock them and sock them, fear six brawling. And believe me, we've got ourselves the kind of a contest that will be talked about for a long time, no matter how it comes out. Number 99 in the series, that means when they get back at Wrigley Field later on, it's going to be number 100 in this great historic series, this legendary series in the annals of sport in our great country. The ball is on the 15-yard line. The Packers are 85 yards away from the bear goal. Bob Skronsky in there at left tackle. Being sized up now by John Johnson and by Phillips who want to make a good rush. And here is the rush now as Bart Starr moves back. He avoids the Bradovich. He throws a wobbly pass incomplete. The target was Elijah Pitt just over the line at the 21-yard line. One of those short yardage passes. Hoping possibly that Elijah could rip off enough gain to get down there into Bear territory. And this next play is going to be intensely significant because if... If they don't make good yardage on this playoff, third down and ten, the Bears can still get that football because the Packers, it would uh, be reasonably safe to say, I think, if anything's reasonably safe to say in this game, would have to punt. 
And the Bears would still get their hands on the football once more. And who knows, it could be a lousy punt. We've had a couple of those today, too. A good punt. Here's Starr dropping back. Hang on there, boys. Don't let him complete this one. It is complete and out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Out of bounds. What? He was out of bounds when he caught the ball. He ruled out of bounds when he caught the ball. There's a break for the Bears. That puts the ball back on the 15-yard line. 38 seconds to go in this game. Now, let's don't have anything silly like uh, roughing the kicker on this one, boys. But if you want to block it, it's all right with Cup and me. Donnie Anderson dropping back to about the goal line. Anderson over the winning. There in the position. He'll kick from about the four. And dropping back for the Chicago Bears are Sayers and Cecil Tanner. All right, there's the kick. He gets it away. It comes up here, and it's caught and down at the... Green Bay Packer, 44-yard line, 32 seconds to go in this game. The game is tied 10-10. Now, here, here's the story. The Bears are entitled to a free kick, a fair kick, signal for Here's the rule. After a final spot, on the next play, you're entitled to a free kick for a field goal. Here's the rule. Watch it. It is good. Good. No rule in the book. has been employed by the Bears. Who's it going to Let's kick the 43-yard field goal. Let me give you this one real straight, because too many people don't understand this rule. But there's a rule in the book that says, after a fair catch is called for after a punt on the ensuing play, a team is titled to a free kick, either by place kick or by tee up, or, or rather by place down, or by drop kick. But what happened there, the Bears called for the right to employ that particular rule. Mac Percival had to be given a 10-yard restraining wall, a free area of 10 yards. Nobody could rush him. The rule called for the Chicago Bears to be allowed to kick that ball as a free kick. And if that ball went between the goalposts, it was going to be three points. And the Bears have made that kick. 43 yards, and they lead 13 to 10 in this game with 23 seconds to go. And I'm telling you, we have had ourselves some football the last couple of weeks in this United States of America. If you're around the Chicago Bears, first of all, we'll kick off now for the Bears. There's a Packer crowd that's absolutely stunned, and I have a feeling about 45,000 people don't understand that rule. Here's the kickoff. It comes down here to Travis Williams at the 5. He's at the 10, the 20, 25. He's met hard by Mike Riley and by Ralph Keurig. And he is hit and knocked down by them and by Freewald at the 27-yard line. 21 seconds to go. 21 seconds going on the clock. And I'm going to tell you something. If you think this game is going to be talked about for a while, and back goes Starr now. He's going to go for the bomb. He's still dangerous. He throws a sideline pass. It's juggled and then a grab by Elijah Pitts and tackled inbound. Tackled inbound by Doug LaFond. And with 13 seconds to go now at the 29-yard line of Green Bay, the Green Bay Packers on the football, and they grab themselves one of the few remaining timeouts they own. Timeout has been called by the Green Bay Packers, and brother, the Bears hang on to this football game, I guarantee you. The first one is on me tonight, so. Ah, all right. Put out way to the left is James this time. There's, there's Star looking, and he says, go on upfield, boys. And he hits himself, Boyd Dowler, and the ball is fumbled. However, the play has been whistled dead as the Packers ball at the 37-38 yard line of Green Bay. Fuckus and Buffon tackling the man. The Bears is what was called a prevent defense right now. In other words, prevent against the bomb. Five seconds to go in this football game. The football game is all over. And the Bears win it. The Bears 13, the Packers 10 in one of the most wild finishes in one of the most spectacular games. I didn't think anything could top last week, but believe me, for suspense. And for absolute startling, shocking, dramatic turn of events, this ball game today has got to go in the books as one of the greatest in this entire series. The final score, the Chicago Bears 13, the Green Bay Packers 10, as they reverse the score of the two games, uh, the two teams that they played up here last year at this time. Couple have a wrap in just a moment. The final score, the Bears 13, Green Bay 10. Cup come down off the ceiling and be ready to talk to us.